Welcome. There's a famous problem in mathematics, somewhat dated right now, called the hat check problem, and it goes as follows. A number of gentlemen check their hats in a cloakroom. But the cloak boy has lost his records and can't remember whose hat is whose. So he decides at the end of the evening to hand the hats back at random. And the puzzle is, what is the probability that no man receives his own hat back? So what are we doing here? We've got n objects, and what we're really asking for is the number of ways to arrange these objects so that no object returns to its original position. Mathematicians call these arrangements derangements. Now, we know there are, if I look, count the total number of arrangements, sorry, my pen's being funny here, uh, there are n factorial ways to arrange n objects in general. So we're seeking a number of form, a formula for the number of derangements. Because then to solve the hat check problem, we need the probability, which would be the total number of derangements that could occur out of the total number of arrangements possible in general. So we really seek this particular formula here. To get a feel for it, um, let's see, d of 1. How many ways can you arrange one object so it doesn't return back to its start? Obviously impossible. d of 2. There's only one way to arrange two objects that none is back in its original position, that is to swap them. For three objects, uh, you do things like, say, uh, 3, 1, 2, or 2, 3, 1, and if you think about it for a little while, that's it. There's only two ways to derange three objects. And if you want to play with it, Turns out there are nine ways to derange four objects, and so on. All right, let's see if we can find a formula in general for the number of derangements on n objects. Now, the algebra involved is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to have to skip over the details, hoping you guys will do it on the side. But I will give you the full mathematics. Uh, let me play with n objects, but I will write six on the page, but think n in my mind. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's think about how you could derange these objects. Let's focus on the number one. First of all, the number one has to go somewhere. You can go one of five places. So I am thinking of n. So the number of derangement of n objects. And what I'm about to do, there's going to be five options, n minus one options, for what I'm about to do next. Now, there are two possibilities now. Suppose one goes specifically to four, or one of these five possibilities. Four could either go back into one's place and I'm left with the task of deranging the remaining four numbers. That is, I'm left with of counting the number of derangements on the remaining two less objects. Or, four does not go back into one's place. It's forbidden to go there. And now I have to think for a moment. I'm now left with the task of arranging five objects, with each of them having restriction. Two cannot go to two's place, three cannot go to three's place, five cannot go to five's place, six cannot go to six's place, and four cannot go to one's place. A little bit of thought shows this is exactly the same problem as deranging five objects. So the number of ways to do that must be d of n minus 1. And there I have a lovely recursive formula for the number of derangements, which I could use with the starting two values to actually wade my way through the problem and count these things. A uh, little side note, it's actually interesting the number of arrangements and factorial actually satisfies exactly the same recursive formula. I bet, and here's one of my first little algebra exercises for the side, n minus 1 factorial plus n minus 2 factorial, all that multiplied by n minus 1 does in the end give you n factorial. Try it. Now, of course, even though it's the same recursive relation, it is a different form in the end because we've got different starting places. Number of ways to arrange one object is 1, number of ways to arrange two, two objects is 2. So beginning starting values gives a different set of uh, permutation values. All right. Now, the recursion formula I have here for the derangements is actually quite awkward. And here's my next piece of exercise, next, next algebra exercise. Folks have discovered in thinking about this that if you take the number of derangements, do, 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 dn, and subtract from it n times d of n minus 1, you can use this relation to see that this is exactly the same as the, same, the opposite of the same formula down one value. D, whoops, d of n minus 2. Sorry, it's very spooky. So that it, this is just a direct consequence of this recursive relation, so you need to play with this on the side. But the nice thing about this, it means that I can, this next formula is minus 1 times the same formula, another value down. So I get my, another minus 1, and then I'm down d n minus 2 minus n minus 2 d of n minus 3. But that is the same with a minus sign introduced of one level down again. Minus 1 cubed, d of n minus 3, da da. 
all the way down to minus 1, and you'll check the algebra, n minus 2 of d, whoops, d of 2 minus 2, d of 1. But what is d of 2 minus 2 minus 1? Well, d of 2 is 1, d of 1 is 0, that's 1. So we've now discovered that d of n minus n, d of n minus 1 is minus 1 to the n minus 2. Actually, um, minus 1 to the n minus 2 is actually the same as minus 1 to the n, it just looks neater. So I'm now left with the recursive relation d of n is n, uh, d of n minus 1 plus minus 1 to the n. And that turns out to be a little simpler to work with to find an explicit formula. All right, like I said, I skipped over the details of the algebra, but they're not hard to verify. All right, so let's use that recursive formula and see if we can get a formula for dn. All right, I'll be very explicit. d of 3 is going to be 3 times d of 2 uh, plus minus 1 to the 3. Okay, so that's 3 times 1 minus 1. d of 4 is going to be 4 times that, 4 times 3 times 1, minus 4, plus minus 1 to the 4th. d of 5 is going to be 5 times that, 5 times 4 times 3 times 1, minus 5 times 4 plus 5, plus minus 1 to the 5th, minus 1. d of 6 is going to be 6 times all that, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 1, minus 6 times 5 times 4, plus 6 times 5, minus 6, plus minus 1 to the 6, plus 1. Alright, this is looking crazy, but if I pull out, in a funky way, 6 factorial from this formula, equals, what am I left behind with? I'm left behind with 1 half, minus 1 over 3 times 2, plus 1 over 4 times 3 times 2, minus 1 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, plus 1 over 6 factorial. That is, I'm really left with 6 factorial over 1 over 6 factorial, minus 1 over 5 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, minus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial, and there's nothing more, but I'm just going to, just for completeness, go minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1. And this suggests then that in general, doo -doo 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 -doo, and I guess a, a formal induction proof would, would, would clinch it for sure if you worry about mathematical rigor, that dn, I need my pen, is n factorial 1 minus 1 plus 1 on 2 factorial minus 1 on 3 factorial plus da 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 all the way up to plus or minus 1 on n factorial. So there is an explicit formula that looks pretty ghastly for the number of derangements. Well, I can't resist saying right now, for those that know calculus, this is very, very familiar. We know that e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared on 2 factorial plus x cubed on 3 factorial all the way up. So this very much looks like the Taylor series for e to the x at x equals negative 1. In fact, as n goes to infinity, this wants to be the Taylor series for evaluated at negative 1. So basically, as n becomes large, the number of derangements wants to become n factorial over e. So, to solve the hat check problem, da -da 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 -da, the probability that no man receives his own hat for very large values of n is very close to probability, whoops, need my pen for the final flourish, to be number of arrangements n factorial over e over the total possible number of arrangements, which is about 1 on e. And as n gets larger and larger, the closer and closer this becomes. That's about 37%, by the way. There it is. Thank you very much.